when people do start, I feel like a lot of people don't have that clarity or don't even have those big dreams or that vision that maybe you had instinctually, you know, as a young kid. So if someone was trying to figure out that clarity in their goals, where would they even start? I think you got to start with where your heart is. You got to start with what excites you. What I always say is, what do you look at online when you're not working? What are you searching? Where, what, what excites you? Is it travel? Is it watches? Is it cars? Is it boats? Is it planes? Is it girls? Is it guys? What is it, right? There's got to be something that gets you going. Is it cooking? Whatever it is, there's a gravitational pull towards a certain thing that you enjoy, that gives you pleasure. And I call this concept uh, hedonistic altruism, where basically you follow your pleasures and through your pleasures, you find your passions through your passions, you create an identity and help other people. And the real access point of what's interesting is everything in life is done through meeting of other people. But in order to meet someone along the way, you have to have something to give. So many people think they have to take, 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 take. No one wants to give if they feel they're going to be taken advantage of. That's just life. So until you have the ability to give, you have to learn. Until you have the ability to not obtain, you have to get in close proximity to that thing and constantly be learning, 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 learning. And then it becomes commonplace. Like I'll give you an example. You know, the Ferrari. You know, when I was 15, 16, 17 years old, I'd go in the Ferrari dealership. I know Chad over there, Chad Morgan, the manager, and I had to look at these cars and these guys were total assholes to me. They're like, oh, this guy's a peasant. He's a young kid. He doesn't know what he, he'll never be able to afford a Ferrari. And I said, okay, you motherfuckers, I'll show you. I'm going to do it. You just watch. So sure enough, I walk in there, you know, 15 years later, I got the car out front and I said, all right, let's set up. I want you guys to help me set up a trip to Italy because I want to do a Ferrari tour. And the only way you can do that is through, you know, the, um, the Ferrari has to set it up for you and pull some strings, et cetera. But I always like proving people wrong. I always like being the underdog. And I always believe that if you have enough tenacity and enough faith in yourself, you can achieve almost anything that you want. But the key to the thing is this. Number one, whatever it is that you want, you have to get in close proximity to it. If you want money, you better be around people with money, right? If you want a beautiful car, you better be around beautiful cars. If you want a beautiful woman, you better be around beautiful women, right? Proximity is key. The second thing is, learn, learn through failure. You know, I was having an argument with a guy the other day. He's like, oh, I don't have enough means to take this, these girls out or attract my wife. I said, dude, you don't go out with girls to find the right girl. You go out with girls to find more about yourself. And in finding yourself, you become more attractive because you are more authentic to yourself. And it is through as the osmosis. I mean, I've been out on thousands of dates when you include my clients in there as well. And I can tell you almost every nuance, step by step by step of how things most likely are going to go, right? And you have to devoid yourself of the expectation because as soon as you expect something is when you lose. When you have no expectations and you're there to have fun and help and educate and uplift others, everything comes your way, right? That's the key. So you get in front of it, you learn about it, you, you study it, and then you start realizing energy is contagious. If you want to be successful in life, you have to be energetic. You have to be positive. You have to be uh, playful. You know, you have to be around people that with similar energy. And then things just start falling into place. And you have to be patient. See, everyone, everyone wants to have that hit every single day. It doesn't work that way. You know, you get a big high. You have a crest. Then you have a dead spell of six months to even a year or two years. And then boom, another big opportunity hits and you, and you, and you get what you want. Man, so much right there. So many ways I could take it, but you did mention dates. You mentioned a lot of dates <laughs> and a lot of people know you as the millionaire date doctor. And also you mentioned about how much you love helping other people. And I want to know that backstory and it involves helping someone very close to you. So do you want to share that story of how that, you know, all happened? Yeah. I mean, growing up, my parents were divorced and I, I never really had full confidence in myself around women. I just never did. You know, I was always overdressed. I was always self-conscious. I was always, I don't know. I just don't feel confident about myself. The popular attractive girls don't want to date me. And then I wanted to learn about it, right? So again, I got close to it. I learned, I read, I understood, and then trial and error, you know, trial and error. And so 
by the time I was in my mid to late twenties, I had pretty good confidence in myself when it came to relationships. So my mother got out of a relationship, a five and a half year relationship. And she came to me and she says, Hey, I want to date online. I said, I don't know if that's a good idea. There's a lot of weirdos <laughs> online. This is before it's more commonplace. Right. And so, um, you know, she, she was honest, she was, you know, melancholy, she was down and I wanted to bring her up as her son. And so basically I said, okay, I will help you do this. But I said, we're going to do it my way. We're going to do it like a business. We're not going to do it just candlelight dinners and beach walks. We're going to do something that a man would find attractive. Right. So one sec, how, how did your mom respond to that? When her son comes to her and says, hey, I'm going to help you with this yeah. whole dating thing. I think she was uh, amenable, you know what I mean? And she was a beautiful woman. She still is a beautiful woman with a kind heart. But we're all walking billboards. You know, to think we're any different is a joke. I mean, the only difference between Tom Brady and Tom, your next door neighbor, is millions of dollars of marketing, self story basically and basically the idealization of social proof and so there's no difference in the dating realm you know if, if you want to be successful as a man or a woman you have to be pre-selected what does that mean well pre-selected means majority of people in the room deem you to be attractive you have good hygiene you're well dressed you're nice you're interactive and you have a magnetic personality right people want to be around you the second thing is you have to have a story because if you're not interesting, no one is going to want to have a conversation with you, right? And, and in those conversations, you don't necessarily talk about yourself, which so many people do. You become an active listener, right? You're learning, you're learning, you're learning, you're learning. And the more you learn, the more you can calibrate quickly to really understand what it is the person that you're talking to wants and become that perfect version of yourself to suit them. And that's no different than relationships of business or romantic relationships, right? You know, that, that's, that's really what I teach is the first thing you have to do is called SCC. Here's an acronym for you. The first S stands for story. If when someone asks you, what do you do? And you don't have that down pat, you are done because you're not interesting enough for people to want to get to know you, right? So story becomes important. The second thing is C, which is commonality. What do we have in common? Oh, you like watches? I like watches. You like sports i like sports you like cars i like cars that's the glue that holds it together right girls like travel they like fashion they like money they like cars they like horses they like all these things right and so as a man your job is to better understand the things that they like and actually have an authentic connection with those things and try to understand why it is they like it why they like the home why they like interior design why they like Louboutins and Hermes Birkin bags and all these things, right? You have to learn about your subject. And then last but not least, which is the last C is conversion. And when people hear conversion, it really has a bad taste, right? Like you're a salesperson, you're trying to convert me. No, basically what it means is win, win. Are we both winning from this interaction? Are we both winning from getting to know one another, right? See, like me coming on your podcast is a win for me because I get to, you know, be in front of your your followers and your friends and they get to know me. It's a win for you because, you know, I'm going to promote the shit out of it and you're going to get in front of all the people that I know and all my followers. So it's a win win. That's conversion. So SCC, story, commonality, conversion. That's the big one. 